Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to the third episode in our mini-series with Klotz and Panzer Battles. And it's going to be the last episode in the series and I thought instead of showing more gameplay, I wanted to kind of pause and offer some impressions, kind of a mini-review if you would, on the features and kind of some reactions to things that I've seen so far in my experience with the game. So let's jump right in and get started. First up, things I like. I love the scope and scale of this game. So this is massive. Right? I mean, there are over 60, well, 60 scenarios now in a branching campaign that can go all different ways, depends on whether you have a major victory, a minor victory, a minor lo you know, loss, a major loss, and things like that. It's got such a dynamic and active campaign. Now, again, the campaign is only playable from the, the German side. You can't play it from the Allied side yet. However, you can go into an individual scenario and play either side. So if you want to do a one-off scenario with the invasion of the United States, you could take the U.S. side and try to defend the United States as uh, as Germany attacks and things like that. But this is, you know, these scenarios are large. Like I think each one of these is probably going to be about an hour, hour and a half, two hours of gameplay. And considering that the campaign is very replayable, and I've also not noticed a lot of kind of subtle changes in like the starting conditions and events and random events and things like that. So there's a lot of variability, I think, in this campaign as you play it out. Units seem to be reacting along some different ways depending upon circumstances and stuff like that. So I feel like this is a game where you could play this core campaign. I mean, the 60 scenarios, probably two hours each, really. So there's probably easily, what, 60 to 100 hours of gameplay to go through one campaign from start to finish. And then you're only really seeing one path through it. So this game is just massive. And top, kind of add into that, 600 different types of units and over 100 different leader skills. And I get a sense that there's been a lot of thought and depth. I mean, this has been a game when it's been over four years in development, and it really shows with the level of complexity and depth in the units, in the leadership skills, and the way the game plays out, and a lot of different kind of features of the game like this. So scope and scale, a huge like with this game. Second thing I really like, and I feel like it's worth mentioning because I feel like it 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 brings this game into a different category than the Panzer Corps, Panzer General kinds of games. Um, I love the supply mechanic in this game. It really just kind of revitalizes the series and gives it a completely different twist than previous installments in this kind of Panzer General kind of niche of war games. I mean, and we're looking at this Toledo episode here, the Toledo scenario right now, and we can see these kind of red lines along these supply lines. And the supply lines really are what fueling our offensive. And I have played now a couple times where you can kind of use encirclements to trap off enemy armies and pincer them and cut off their supply, which is a whole different set of tools that you can bring to your arsenal in order to be able to succeed at this game. I love how the supply works, how it flows. It seems to work really, really well. And it just really adds another layer to this type of game. So big plus there. Strategic movement as well. Really like it. I mean, you're talking, you're bringing units across the map, you're hopping them on and connecting with train lines to pull the units across the board, which again, gets in that whole idea of the supply lines are not only for supplying of units, but it's also for moving of units. So it really kind of changes the nature of this game. And I think that's one thing I would say that, you know, comparing this to Panzer General and Panzer Corps, how is it different? It's a level, it feels to me so far, a level more complex. It's kind of like Panzer General plus plus, if you would, is how it feels in terms of gameplay. It's rich, it's deep, and I find it's got that kind of one more turn type of element that makes the Panzer Corps, Panzer General types of games so appealing. But this adds another layer of complexity to it that feels like it's been really well thought out and really been well executed. So those are my likes. And, the, and I think the thing I like about that supply and what I like about the strategic movement is that it kind of adds an oper a little bit more of an operational realism and an operational level to this type of war game. So those are the pluses. Those are the things I like. Are there things I don't like so much yet? Um, I feel like the user interface and that kind of informational navigation uh, needs improvement. And to be totally honest, I feel like in a game like this, it's all about information and you've got a ton of units you wanna be able to move through. You wanna be able to get that information about those units fast 
and as seamlessly as possible without interference from the, the user interface. And I feel like the user interface in this game, I mean, granted, right, there's a lot going on. And also granted, I think there's a caveat here. I'm still learning how to play. So I think there's elements of this user interface complexity that I'm finding that are probably on me, yet I've still seen enough places where I've seen like, gosh, I really feel like this could be leveled up a little bit to make the game just slightly better in terms of that uh, user experience, in terms of moving units around. Let me give you some examples of places where I've noticed it. First up, uh, you know, when you click on a unit, so right now this is our attack on Toledo. We've got our nationalist force here. We're driven out the Republican forces from Toledo here. And I've got the basic information of my unit here in terms of attack and things like that on the right-hand side. But what I don't have is this deeper information here, which I really want, which are a lot of like the hard combat values, the soft combat values, range for artillery, um, all this different kinds of information, user level and experience is not so critical for where you are. But this is the type of information that I want to be able to access. And when I do that, I can't see my unit, right? So it's behind it and I want to be able to see the unit. Second of all, on the right hand side, we've got all of the unit information here, which is great. But if I want to click on this unit, I can't, I don't know where it is on the map. And that's what's really important. I want to know where this unit on the map is. And so if I close it, it zooms out and it shows me where the unit, and now I got to zoom all the way in. And what I really want to be able to do is I want to get all this information somewhere on the side. And then I can, when I click on a unit, like if I click on this unit, it takes me right to that unit and I can see the unit on the map because there's a lot of space around this screen right here, but there's nothing I can really do. So kind of too long didn't read. I wish there was a better way to get this deeper information on the units without blocking my view of the screen. And I wish there was an easier way to get this deeper unit information on the units while navigating among my units. That's what I really want because this feels like it's kind of getting in the way a lot to the gameplay experience. Um, so it's that unit, unit navigation, unit information kind of experience that I feel could use kind of a leveling up. Now, to go back to other things that I like, and I think that the things that are worth mentioning here, which are going to connect to kind of my, my final thoughts on this game at this point in my, my kind of experience with the game. Um, the designer seems very responsive. There's been a couple of bugs that have come up and I've posted them on the Steam discussion forums. And usually the next day, they have a bug fix out addressing those issues. So they seem like they're listening to people. They seem like they're working to make the game better. And this doesn't feel in any way like a game that's been released and they're like, ah, we're done with it. I feel like this is a, this is obviously a labor of love. It's a small team. So if you'd like to support kind of small independent developers taking kind of some cool ideas and seeing if they can make a game better than what's out there in these kinds of things, by all means, I feel like this is a great example of a team that's, that's doing it right and they're trying to make things better and they're not releasing the game and stopping. They're releasing the game and they're continuing to work on it. There's been updates I'm going to say like every three, four days since release. So I feel like they're really doing a good job of supporting this. And so given that, I feel like over time, this is going to be a game that's going to evolve into something more than it is right now, as good as it is already. But so that user interface, unit navigation kind of thing. The other thing, for example, another, there's some little things and they all add up to sometimes this sense of, ah, I wish the navigation, I wish that user experience could be better. Um, another example of a little thing, and I've mentioned it in the gameplay episodes, um, uh, core, knowing what your core units are in a game like this is really important because you want to give your core units the experience. Those are the ones you're taking on to subsequent scenarios and things like that. And I can see that it's listed core here in the review army on the right hand side. But if I click on this fourth German regular infantry, it doesn't say core here on the left. It only says it in that small text on the review army. And when I close and actually kind of go to the unit on the screen here, I don't see any way to identify a unit as core. And, and again, this might be my, my learning experience that I haven't figured it out yet how to do that. But I feel like it should be more obvious that I should be able to look at a unit and say, oh, that's one of my core units. I want to be able to know my core units when I'm playing the game. I don't want to have to dump into that kind of the, the deeper screen and then hunt around in the review army screen to figure out which ones my core units are. That would be really helpful for me there. Um, likewise, Combat is a bit of a mystery to me right now. Like I realize when you get next to a unit and you click, you kind of hover over a unit, you get some anticipated combat results. But I'm not really sure how things like scatter work, how the combat results are calculated, the value of various terrain and stuff like that. I assume that's kind of in the manual and maybe that'll come out more if I play through the rest of the tutorial and things like that. But I feel like there should be a screen or some kind of a, a tooltip to press 
that pulls that deeper calculation of combat that shows me why the odds are the way they are and what's going on there so that I can figure out how to execute combat better. Uh, and so, and maybe that's there. This again might be a learner experience. Maybe I have a certain press a certain key that's going to pull up that information, but I haven't been able to find that yet. So, if someone does know that, let me know. But that's kind of another example there. Um, with that, also, I haven't found a way to pull up the victory conditions uh, per turn. And sometimes the victory conditions also connect to certain hexes on the map, like we're supposed to capture Toledo here. And when you get the victory conditions screen in between turns, it shows you the coordinates of those final victory point positions, but it, the coordinates aren't listed on the map. So you kind of have to calculate over like, okay, row 17, fifth one down, it's probably up there somewhere, but it'd be, it'd be great if like the victory condition, like the objective hexes had are more easily identified. I mean, they do have a star on them, I suppose. But referencing them by coordinates doesn't really work because the map's not there. So you kind of get it. There's just a, there's a, you know, there's a handful of places here where I feel like it could use a leveling up in terms of the user experience. And it's something that I'm hopeful they'll work on on more as the game goes forward, because I feel like that's probably the biggest area. That's really the only area that I'm looking at and saying, gosh, it'd be so nice if I didn't have to do this all the time or it'd be so nice if there are a way to figure this kind of thing out. Um, so, so those things are there. Another one last thing too, kind of just another example. If you click on a unit here and then I go click on information, I can see the leaders here and I can see their skills by clicking on the leader skills. But there's no way to tell for me to tell whether this pillager tactician audacious is level one, level two or level three. Um, it only the numbers change, of course, if it's kind of a value. It's a you know, if you're getting seven, a combat bonus, the combat bonus will get bigger and stuff like that. But it'd be really nice if under these traits and skills, at least the ones that had level one, level two and three, that if someone had achieved level two or level three, that it listed it there so that I knew where it was and what level that was. So it's again, this little thing where you're working with a lot of information in a game like this. And I feel like sometimes the game is a little bit of a, a fight to pull that information out. It is something I imagine and I, I hope hopeful that they will kind of work on and improve as the game goes forward. It's the biggest kind of drawback, if you would, if I were to say, what's something I'm, I'm not super excited about the game? That is, it is that user experience right there. The other things I think that are worth mentioning. AI, I'm cautiously optimistic. I haven't, I think the AI in a game like this is something you have to play at at various levels, try a lot of different levels and things like that. I'm consciously optimistic about the AI based on what I've seen in the, in the scenarios I've played so far and the time I've spent with the game so far, I'm liking the things that the AI is doing. Sometimes I kind of wonder, but at the lower levels, the designers have said the AIs are gonna make kind of human errors. And I haven't really cranked it up to a high level yet. I do think the game's AI is going to give me a challenge, but I feel like I also need to play a lot more and get in more of the aircraft and the ship combat to really make a judgment call on that. So far, so kind of a cautiously optimistic thumbs up about the AI at this level, but I reserve judgment on that because I feel like I need to see that kind of play out a little bit more. That's something I think you really feel like you need 50, 60 hours with the game at various levels of complexity, various AI settings to really start to get a sense for. Uh, but so far, I like what I've seen. Uh, the scenario balance and scenario design and campaign design, I really feel like you almost have to play through the whole campaign scenarios and the tree once a little bit. You know, are there scenarios that are just too hard, that are unbalanced? Uh, are a lot of scenarios too easily set up? Is there a wide range over that scenario balance? That's something I think you really have to play through the campaign almost two or three times sometimes to figure out or at least kind of see how people are experiencing on Steam and things like that. I haven't seen anything yet of people running into kind of the um, kind of gatekeeper, if you would, scenarios that are unbalanced against you that prevent a lot of people from going on in the campaign, ones that are just too hard. So I feel like, again, cautiously optimistic that the scenario balance and the campaign trees are going to flow well and they're going to be a good user experience based on the designs and the kind of the complexity and the balance and the nuances I've seen in the scenarios I've played so far. I'm liking what I see, and I feel like the designers have spent a lot of time working on that. Again, this is a game that it does not lack for effort in design and input. Let's put it that way, right? A lot of time, a lot of, it's a labor of love. You can really feel that here. So that's kind of, I think, the big things. Oh, I guess I suppose the last thing I could mention too, uh, graphics and sounds and, and music and things like that. Like the music a lot. I feel like it really kind of brings you into the game. 
Uh, the graphics and sounds to me are perfectly acceptable. I think they, you know, they're not, they're not eye popping. Wow, this really blows me away. This is amazing and things like that. I do feel like they're very atmospheric. I feel like they're appropriate. I feel like they pull me into the game. Uh, I don't think also they're central, honestly. You, you don't play a game like this for the graphics, if you would. This isn't an eye candy game that pulls you in. You want enough eye candy to feel like you're in that environment. I think this game does that in a way. So yeah, I mean, I, I like the graphics. I think they're great. They're I think they work well. You know, I think they're fine, kind of thing like that. No problems. Um, I do. The only thing I will say is that I wish, like sometimes there was a little bit more contrast between the units and the background. In some cases, like sometimes when an artillery unit's in a city, I haven't been able to spot it. Or like even like up in here, if we look at Madrid, it's a little bit tricky to see the infantry in the city there. So maybe just a little bit more work on some of the contrast between the units and the background. But that really hasn't got in the way at all or anything like that. That's rare where I kind of say, oh, whoa, wait, wait, there's an artillery in that city that I didn't see. I mean, it happens a couple of times, but it's not a big deal. So yeah, I think, um, you know, thumbs up on the graphics. I'm perfectly happy and perfectly fine with it. So the big question we have, right? <clears throat> thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways on the game. How do I feel? I think at this point in time, it's a cautiously optimistic thumbs up. I want to see a little bit more of the AI I want to see a little bit more on that scenario balance as I play through the longer campaign. I'm going to keep going with this off camera and kind of play forward and stuff. So I think I hope to at some point in the future come back and do a more in-depth review and comment on the AI. Although I get a sense that by the way that the developers are working on it, this is going to be a game that evolves over time. And because of that, I think that's why I give it that cautiously optimistic thumbs up because I feel like the designers are very open to input. I feel like the designers are working hard to make the game better. And I feel like the designers are going to take this game and bring it into its full potential. So, um, and I think the other thing to be said too, you know, if you like to support small independent designers, taking a risk, making a labor of love in a category of game that you like and you enjoy, that's oftentimes enough for me to feel like I wanna support this design studio in their efforts. I think we need more of this type of game, of this type design studio. And so for that kind of reason, I feel like this is something that is well worthy of our support and our encouragement. And especially when you see a design team that's so responsive and so engage, engaged in what they're doing and trying to make this just an outstanding game. So yeah, a cautiously optimistic thumbs up so far. And I will say, just simply put, I've really enjoyed playing the game. I'm going to continue playing the game off camera. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I'm looking forward to seeing how the scenario plays out and learning more. I haven't really dipped in too much into the air combat and the sea combat. So those are kind of question marks that I've still got, but I'm liking it so far. I've enjoyed it. I feel like this is a game that if you like that Panzer General, uh, Panzer Corps type of game, you can expand out into this. Again, it's kind of Panzer General, Panzer Corps plus plus, maybe with some of the added features and mechanics and things like that. So um, really good job. I look forward to seeing what it becomes over time as the designers keep working on it. And yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic thumbs up. Let me know if you have questions down below. Have you got the game? Have you tried it? Uh, what are your thoughts? What are the things you like? Are there things you don't like? Love to hear from you down in the comments, but uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I think I'll probably come back in a, a bit at some point and maybe give kind of an update as the game's going on, how my campaign's going and things like that. But um, yeah, have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in.